Doug and I, we're very different. For me, I care only about the user. What fuels me is if I know I can do something important that nobody else has done. When we design stuff, we'll be arguing a lot in our offices because tension creates the beautiful things. In a technology company, there are two tracks. There's a management track, you know, the directors, vice presidents, president, CEO, and then there is a technical track. The fellow is the highest point of the technical track. Now, Doug's the first fellow, and I'm the second fellow. When I was 12 years old, I was walking over to my neighbor's house and I saw this guy working on a bicycle. I went over there and I said, hey, that's really cool, you're taking that apart? Could you show me what you're doing? Then we've been sort of friends ever since. When I joined Cepheid, there was six to 12 people and all hands meetings were all held in just a little room which we used as a cafeteria in a borrowed space. Our first product was a real-time thermocycler and the thing that we came up with was the film smart cycle tube. All our PCR happens in this little diamond. Here's the paradox is you have a smart cycler tube and we're supposed to be able to do real-time PCR in 30 minutes, right? But it only takes you four and a half hours on the bench to prep the sample to go into that tube. So you don't get a result until five hours of work. So the holy grail really in diagnostics is the sample prep. The genius that Doug had was that he figured out you always have a sample, you always have to enrich and you always have to deplete, you always have to do something. When he wrapped it around a three-dimensional cartridge and he figured it all out, it's like doing a big matrix and he got it. And when as soon as we saw that, we knew that's what it was, that that, that was it. The thing that stops most medical technology and these new high-tech detection schemes and MEMS and all that stuff from succeeding is everybody forgets the simple part because it's not sexy. If you look inside the Gene Expert as Doug designed it, there's acceptance of the entire system. This is the modern day cartridge. Here's the lid. The lid has functionality on it that allows us to do the reagents on board. In a nutshell, it's completely sealed when it comes from the factory so that our dry reagents and stuff can stay dry. And when the user opens the lid, it actually peels the film away to allow the chambers to vent, which is important because if they weren't vented, we wouldn't be able to transfer fluids from one chamber to the next. And the foot holds both the reaction tube and the valve body in place on the cartridge. So the Gene Expert cartridge design, it's a very simple system, but it can do anything you can do on the bench and much, much more. In the basic development of the Gene Expert, there's one point where we were the fork. And that fork was, do we make this for a user, a person, or do we make it for a machine? If you make it for a machine, it becomes square, it becomes like an inkjet cartridge, no character, ugly. But, you know, I said, you know what, if I'm going to do this, let's make it for a user. While Doug was developing this module, I went and put the pretty wrapper on it. This here is the very first Gene Expert. And then that, after seven or eight years, we did a redesign on the system. The most elegant designs are the really simple designs. You know when it's good enough when it ends up turning out so simple, so obvious looking. If you look at the Gene Expert instrument and the size of an actual module, that module is doing the real-time PCR and it's also doing the full sample prep. In the industry, if you were to point at something that could do it in that size and as flexible as this one, you wouldn't find anything close. It can do any protocol in the future that we can imagine, which nobody else can say. It truly is a platform. The way we look at the Gene Expert in the future, it's just a planet. There's a whole universe, and the, gene, the new Gene Expert is just a little part of that universe. You know, we're still here, and we're still working on stuff. We're looking 20 years out, 15 years out and we're gonna be trying a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, we give them the tools for the future. We give them the tools to make the business in the future.